Okay, thank you very much, Shakti. It's a great pleasure for me to participate in this webinar with people from all over the world. So let me begin with the big picture. When we look at the state of the world today, at our multifaceted global crisis, what is most evident is that none of our major problems, energy, environment, the climate emergency, economic inequality, and now the COVID pandemic, none of these problems can be understood and solved in isolation. They are systemic problems, which means that they're all interdependent and interconnected. To understand and solve them, we need to learn how to think systemically which means thinking in terms of relationships, in terms of patterns, in terms of context. And indeed, such a systemic understanding of life has recently emerged at the forefront of science. And this is what my work is all about. Over the last few decades, I developed a synthesis of this new understanding of life, which I call the system's view of life. Now, you may have heard about systems thinking before. It has been taught by a number of organizational theorists and consultants for several decades. However, what I'm presenting in my books and in my online course is quite different. Their frameworks generally are based on the classical systems theories of the 1940s. My synthesis, by contrast, embodies what I've come to call advanced systems thinking. There is a conceptual watershed between the classical and the advanced systems thinking. The key difference is that advanced systems thinking is formulated in terms of concepts derived from complexity theory, which was developed in the, in the 1970s and 1980s. Now, you will appreciate that such a synthesis involves quite a few technical terms, but recently, I have found a completely non-technical way of summarizing it. And I do so in terms of four essential characteristics of life, which can be observed at all levels of complexity, from the smallest bacteria through the wide range of plants, animals, human beings, social systems, ecosystems, and so on. So four essential characteristics. The first, life organizes itself in networks. This actually contains two ideas. One is that the network is the basic pattern of organization of all living systems. And two, that life organizes itself. In other words, the network pattern is not imposed by the environment, but is created by the system itself. The second characteristic is that life is inherently regenerative. Now, the continual regeneration of life in nature is ancient knowledge. You just have to think of the turn of the seasons with new growth in every spring, continual regeneration. What is new in the system's view is the observation that this, this regeneration operates at all levels of complexity, down to the molecular networks of cells. Regeneration is the very essence of life's self-organization. When regeneration stops, life stops. The third characteristic is that life is inherently creative. And this is really something radically new that scientists have 
uh, observed uh, and discovered only very recently. I'm talking here about a particular process known as emergence, the spontaneous emergence of new order at critical points of instability. This is characteristic of all living systems and it expresses the creativity inherent in all life. So we are not creative because we may be poets, artists, or designers. We are not even creative because we are human. We are creative because we are alive, because life itself is creative. And finally, the fourth characteristic is that life is inherently intelligent. And this is connected with a new concept of cognition, or if you wish, of mind, that uh, was developed in the last few decades. This is a complex new concept. To summarize it, I would say the interactions of a living system with its environment are not an automatic response, but are directed by the system itself according to its nature and according to past experience. And this is why these interactions are identified as cognitive or intelligent. So in my synthesis, I weave these ideas, each of them radical, and full of important implications into a coherent conceptual framework. As I have mentioned, this systemic understanding of life is urgently needed today to solve our major global problems. However, the conceptual framework is not the whole story. If it were, we would have persuaded our political and corporate leaders long ago to help us build a sustainable future. Just think that right now we are witnessing exceptional heat waves, droughts all around the world with millions of dollars of losses in agriculture and, and other areas. We are witnessing tremendous floods in more intense hurricanes. And these are all uh, phenomena, events that were predicted by climate scientists uh, already about 30 years ago. Now, you will know that in the United States, the American Congress last week passed significant climate legislation which is great to know. However, half of the Senate voted against this legislation. Now, these senators are not stupid, but they are immoral. So we need to talk about morality. We need to talk about ethics. We need to talk about uh, personal transformation, about inner development. And this is what Monica Sharma's work is about. So with that, I'm happy to turn it over to Monica.